I wanted to get your thoughts on we all we we've discussed already the Cassian and and Kachuk and then the the war of words mostly one sided from Cassian but also Matthew Perot now being upset as well with Jake Rutan and not yeah. getting suspended and once again just in a short time span of one week players are just questioning what's legal what's not legal I mean has there been a response from the league here at all No on? no nothing officially no. but you know, that's what we do, right? So you, you gather your intel uh, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say, um, and, and I think we can all understand and appreciate Matthew Perot's frustration. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I didn't know this, and it's, it's a, an interesting statistic to me. He's tied with current players for the most suspensions against, which is four. So four players have been suspended for acts against or Matthew on Perot. Matthew Perot. So he's sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we can understand why. Um, George Peros is as available as, as any executive of the National Hockey League. He just is. And he makes that abundantly clear to the managers, to the coaches, and to the players when they do that, that early season visit. So I think he'd have been aggravated that Matthew Perot chose to, you know, air his concerns in a very emotional way to the media rather than call him directly to say, I don't understand how Vertanen got away with that. I'm not worried about the two-minute penalty that wasn't called, although it mm -hmm. was obviously a penalty. Mm -hmm. you know, I got hit in the chops with an elbow. You guys keep telling us that you're trying to crack down on hits to the head. Where's the hearing? Where, where's the supplemental discipline here? Mm -hmm. Now, the flip side as to why... Um, my understanding is Dops didn't believe that there was enough force there to rise to the level of supplemental discipline. And the elbow more grazed the beard slash chin and impacted the shoulder more than it did the head. Now, again, you could debate that when you see Perot on the bench and he's kind of trying yeah. to readjust his jaw. So he, he caught a, a good piece of it. The follow-up is the position that Perot put himself in now in the eyes of the Department of Player Safety. As angry as he was, and, and he was angry, he started the scrum by saying, the Department of Player Safety, my ass. <laughs> Not a good place to start. No. Um, no. But he, he literally said that if it happens again, he's going to take matters into his own hands, and if he asked, he was going to club somebody over the forehead with his stick. Yeah, he went a little far, yeah. So now if you're Paris of the Department of Player Safety and Matthew Perot is involved in any stick-related incident, does he get the benefit of the doubt? Probably not. No. Probably not, because on record he said, vigilante justice, that's going to fly in my work world because I don't feel like I'm being appropriately protected. So mm -hmm. I, I get his frustration. And, and look, Winnipeg tried to talk him out of going to the cameras and the media as I'd like to see the PR person hanging off him as he's just dragging them into the scrum. Well, I'm sure that Scotty <laughs> Brown, who's excellent at his craft, he's been around a long time, you know, was okay with him talking to the media. That's fine, but he probably said, look, just cool it down here. Like, be careful. Don't, don't get yourself in trouble. And I mean, you didn't even have to poke the bear. He came in swinging as soon as he really he got did. to the scrum. No pun intended, he came in swinging. But this is, this is a little bit more calm. I slept on it. Matthew Perot today talking okay. about his original comments. Yeah, well, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, like my emotion got a little, a little high there. Like I wouldn't, I w obviously wouldn't slash anybody in the face. That's just not who I am. I've never done anything like that in my career. Yeah, that was probably a little too much for me to say. Yeah, you know what that is, with all due respect, and I look, good on him. This happened Tuesday. Mm. His response was Thursday, right? Yesterday. Oh, he was still steaming. So he had two days to cool down. This is George Peros, Kevin Shovelday off line one. Mm. Shovelday off traveling, has to deal with this. He's annoyed. He calls his coach or calls Matthew Perot directly and says, you need to fix this. So you're going to the media tomorrow, and you're going to apologize for what was an mm -hmm. overstated comment. Well, there you go. Uh, okay, That's what... my, my read on it anyway. No, I totally yeah. agree with you, Darren. And yesterday was emotional, and you know, and he he he. Were, even when he said it yesterday, and I was talking to a number of people within our bill, I said it was emotional. He's not going to yeah. go slash anybody in the face, no. like you know, he just mm -hmm. isn't. Like I mean, but th that's the emotions of it. But you know, th th there's two things here. Number one is you know, players understanding, like get a full explanation. One of the things I think sometimes with these types of things, like you know. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm not saying George Peros or DOPS didn't do it, yeah. but maybe just say, Matthew, we're not going to have a hearing for Jake for 10, and here's why. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you think, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and, and maybe that's just a way to diffuse it. It's, it's a suggestion. That's all it is. I'm not saying they should. It's a suggestion how you diffuse it because – Things do become emotional, and keep in mind too about Matthew Perot. Four suspensions against. He's had concussions, yeah. So he's sensitive yeah, to that. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and and again, I think the reason why we're also talking a little bit more about it is a highly entertaining, you know, media scrums, but also just the fact that it was two incidents in the same week, right? Where you have Zach Cassian going, "Oh, that's what's considered legal." Then I guess that's what I'm going to do to Kachuk, and then you have Perot going, "Oh, yeah. that's what's considered legal." Well, I'm going to take Management this into my own hands. Also involved. Mm-hmm. You know, from Edmonton's perspective, as as Pierre Lebrun reported, I mean, Coley Campbell would have reached out to Kenny Holland and likely to Brad Trilliving and the Calgary Flames to say, "We don't mm-hmm. number one, we don't like the Cassian comments, but there better not be right. any sort of retribution outside of the realm of the game on January 29th, mm-hmm. or you guys are going to have an issue." And I do think. And listen, and I get it because I know there are a lot of people out there, and I might even put myself in this category where you're excited for that game now and you want to see it. Oh, yeah, but, it's good. And I, but I, I agree with the league having to say something and having to be really careful because I think there's still a ton of sensitivity around what may have happened, even though it was a couple decades ago, wouldn't you, with Vancouver in the playoffs? Todd Bertuzzi. And, and there is Todd no Bertuzzi and question you about got, that. Yeah, you have to be so careful with, let's call it what it is, like head hunting. You want to be careful with that. It's vigilante justice. And yeah. you know what? The league doesn't want that. And bottom line is, is we're all going to be tuning in on January 29th and <laughs> nothing's going to happen. But that's my <laughs> there's, point. There's we're gonna all going to tune penalties in. There's penalties in the game, one for interference and one for too many men on the ice. Yeah. See, if I'm old school, and I know we got to go to break here, but mm. I – if I, do we have to go? To yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, we do. Um, but say, see, I love when I host shows. Uh, so, <laughs> if I'm Dave Tippett, I put Milan or uh, uh, Jeff Ward. I put D- Milan Lucic out there. I'm, I'm going to assume McDavid's starting, right? And uh, and Cassian's going to be out there. I put Lucic opposite, old school, right? Yeah. And Luch whispers in Cassian's ear and just says something like. I may not be able to catch 97, but if you even look twice at one of our guys, <laughs> starting with Matthew Kachuk, I will find Connor McDavid. Mm-hmm. End of story. Let's not forget, it was actually before Zach Cassian just started wailing on Kachuk. McDavid it was, came in. It right? was McDavid. Kind of. He smashed kind of, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, he did, but he went, he went <laughs> after him. And I went, oh, that was the first thing I was thinking. I'm like, oh, dear God, no. Good no. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Conroy tells a good story about Brian McGratton when he was playing with the Flames. And <laughs> the the players on Vancouver were going after Jerome. There was a face-off right in front of the uh, Vancouver bench. And Brian turned around, and he looked right at Daniel and Henrik. And he said, I don't know who's who, <laughs> but I just know this. <laughs> yeah. The next guy that goes after Jerome, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm coming for one of you two, right?